Hello, and welcome to the 38th episode of Scripture in a Year, hosted by Saints Peter and Paul Orthodox Church in the Albanian Archdiocese of the OCA. Today's reading is Numbers chapters 29 to 32. Now in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no service work. It shall be a signal day for you. You shall offer a whole burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One young bull from the oxen, one ram, and seven unblemished male lambs in their first year, with their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil. Three tenths of an ephah for each young bull, two tenths for the one ram, and one tenth for each of the seven male lambs. And one young male from the goats is a sin offering to make atonement for you. In addition to the whole burnt offerings for the first day of the month, with their grain offerings and drink offerings, and the regular whole burnt offering, with their grain offerings and drink offerings, according to their interpretation, as a sweet aroma to the Lord. On the tenth day of this seventh month you shall have a holy convocation. You shall afflict your souls, and you shall not do any work. You shall offer whole burnt offerings, burnt offerings as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One young bull from the oxen, one ram, and seven male lambs in their first year. Be sure they are unblemished. With their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for each young bull, two-tenths for the one ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven male lambs, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering to make atonement for you. In addition to the sin offering of atonement and the regular whole burnt offering, with its grain offering and drink offering, according to the interpretation, as a burnt offering of sweet aroma to the Lord. Then on the fifteenth day of the seventh month you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no service work, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. You shall offer whole burnt offerings, burnt offerings as a sweet aroma to the Lord. On the first day offer thirteen young bulls from the ox and two rams and fourteen male lambs in their first year. They shall be unblemished with their grain offerings of fine flour mixed with oil. Three-tenths of an ephah for each of the thirteen bulls two-tenths for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen male lambs, and one young male kid from the goats as a sin offering, in addition to the regular whole burnt offering, with their grain offerings and their drink offerings. On the second day you shall offer twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year, with their grain offering and drink offering for the young bulls, the rams, the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering in addition to the regular whole burnt offering with their grain offerings and drink offerings. On the third day you shall offer eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year with their grain offering and drink offering for the young bulls, the rams, the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering in addition to the regular whole burnt offering with their grain offerings and their drink offerings. On the fourth day you shall offer ten young bulls, two rams, and fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year, with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the young bulls, the rams, and the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats, as a sin offering in addition to the regular whole burnt offering, with their grain offerings and drink offerings. On the fifth day you shall offer nine young bulls, two rams, and fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year, with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the young bulls, the rams, the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering, in addition to the regular whole burnt offering, with their grain offerings and drink offerings. On the sixth day you shall offer eight young bulls, two rams, and fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the young bulls, the rams, the male, with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the young bulls, the rams, and the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering, in addition to the regular whole burnt offering, with their grain offerings and drink offerings. On the seventh day you shall offer seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen unblemished male lambs in their first year, with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the bulls, the rams, and the male lambs, according to their number, according to their interpretation, and one young male from the goats as a sin offering, in addition 
to the regular whole burnt offering with their grain offerings and drink offering. On the eighth day, you shall have the final day of the festival. You shall do no service work on it. You shall present whole burnt offerings, burnt offerings as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One young bull, one ram, seven unblemished male lambs in their first year with their grain offerings and drink offerings for the bull, the ram, and the male lambs according to their number, according to their interpretation. And one young male from the goats is a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with their grain offerings and drink offerings. These you shall offer to the Lord at your appointed feasts in addition to your vows and voluntary offerings as well as your whole burnt offerings, your grain offerings, your drink offerings, and your peace offerings. Now Moses told the children of Israel everything as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses spoke to the rulers of the tribes of Israel, saying, This is the word the Lord commanded. If any man should vow a vow to the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with an obligation, he may not defile his word. He shall do everything that proceeds out of his mouth. But if a woman should vow a vow to the Lord, and bind herself with an obligation while in her father's house, but if a woman should vow a vow to the Lord, and bind herself with an obligation while in her father's house in her youth, and her father should hear her vows and obligations with which she bound her soul, and her father should pass over it in silence, then all her vows and every obligation with which she bound her soul shall stand and remain in force for her. But if on the day her father should hear and disapprove all her vows and obligations with which she bound her soul, then her vows shall not stand. Therefore the Lord will consider her blameless, because her father disapproved. But if she should actually be married, and she binds her soul with vows made by an explicit statement of her own lips, and her husband should hear and pass over it in silence the day he hears, then all her vows and obligations with which she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband should disapprove on the day he hears, then all her vows and obligations with which she bound her soul shall not remain in force, because her husband disapproved of her. Therefore the Lord will consider her blameless. Also any vow of a widow or a divorced woman, whatever she should vow concerning her soul, shall remain in force for her. But if her vow should be made in her husband's house, or if her obligation concerning her soul shall be made with an oath, and her husband should hear and pass over it in silence, and not disapprove her, then all her vows shall stand, and every obligation with which she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband should cancel them on the day he hears, then whatever proceeded from her lips concerning her vows or obligations, binding her soul, they shall not remain in force, for her husband canceled them. Therefore the Lord will consider her blameless. Every vow and binding oath to afflict her soul, her husband shall establish, or her husband shall cancel. But if her husband should remain silent for more than a single day, then he shall establish all her vows for her, and he shall establish for her the obligations binding her, because he remained silent regarding her on the day he heard them. But if he should cancel them the day after he heard them, then he shall bear her guilt. These are the ordinances the Lord commanded Moses between a husband and his wife, and between a father and his daughter in her youth in her father's house. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Exact vengeance from the Midianites for the children of Israel. Afterward, you shall be added to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm some of your men to stand in battle array before the Lord against Midian, to repay vengeance from the Lord on Midian. From all the tribes of Israel you shall send a thousand from each tribe to stand in battle array. So from the thousands of Israel... They counted a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for the battle line. Then Moses sent them a thousand from each tribe with their army, and Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest with the holy vessels and the trumpets for the signaling in his hand. So they arrayed themselves in battle against Midian, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian together with their slain people, Evi, Zur, Rechem, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword, along with their slain people. They also took as plunder the women of Midian with their households, their cattle, all their possessions, and they plundered their army. 
They also set on fire all the cities where they dwelt and all their unwalled villages. They took as well all their booty and spoils from man to cattle. They brought the captives, the spoils, and the booty to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp in Araboth of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Then Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the rulers of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was angry with the overseers of the army, with the captains over thousands and rulers over hundreds, who were coming from the battle line of the war. So Moses said to them, Why did you take every female alive? For on account of Balaam's counsel, they were with the sons of Israel and caused them to depart from and despise the Lord's word in the incident at Peor, when there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore, kill every male among all the little ones and every woman who slept with a man, but keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not slept with a man. But you remain outside the camp seven days, and every one who killed or touched someone killed, both you and your captives, shall be purified on the third day and the seventh day. Purify every garment, everything made of leather, everything woven of goat's hair, and everything made of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men in the army who came from the battle lines of the war, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Besides the gold, the silver, the brass, the iron, the lead, and the tin, everything that can pass through fire shall be purified. Otherwise it shall be purified with the water of purification. Therefore, whatever cannot pass through the fire shall pass through the water. You shall also wash your clothes on the seventh day, and be clean, and afterward you may come into the camp. Again the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the sum of the spoils of the captives, from man to cattle, you and Eleazar the priest, and the rulers of the families in the congregation, and divide the spoils between the warriors who went out into the battle lines and all the congregation, and levy a tribute for the Lord on the men of war who went out to the battle lines, one soul of every five hundred men, and of the cattle, the oxen, the sheep, and the goats. And you shall take their tribute and give it to Eleazar the priest as a first fruits to the Lord. But from the children of Israel's half, you shall take one of every fifty of men, the oxen, the sheep, the donkeys, and from all the cattle, and give them to the Levites, who keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The booty remaining from the plunder which the men of war took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 oxen, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 human souls, that is, the women who had not slept with a man. And the half, the portion for those who had gone out to war, was in number 337,500 sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was 675. The oxen were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The human souls were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 32 souls. So Moses gave the Lord's tribute, God's choice portion, to Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then from the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men of war, that is, the half belonging to the congregation, was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 oxen, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 human souls. And from the children of Israel's half, Moses took one of the, every fifty from men to cattle and gave them to the Levites who kept charge of the tabernacle of the Lord in the manner the Lord commanded Moses. Then all those established in positions as commanders in the army, the captains over thousands and the rulers over hundreds, came near to Moses. And they said to Moses, Your servants took the sum of the men of war with us, and not a man of us is missing. Therefore, we have brought a gift to the Lord that what every man found of articles of gold, bracelets, rings, armlets, and hair clasps, to make atonement for us before the Lord. So Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from them, every crafted article. So every choice portion of gold which they dedicated to the Lord from the captains over thousands and rulers over a hundred was 16,750 shekels. Now each of the men of war had taken plunder for himself. 
So Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from the captains over thousands and rulers over hundreds, and brought these into the tabernacle of testimony as a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Now the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle, and they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, and they saw the place was a place for cattle. So the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad came and spoke to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to the rulers of the congregation, saying, Adaroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elielah, Shebam, Nebo, and Beon, the country the Lord delivered over to the children of Israel, is a land appropriate for feeding cattle, and your servants have cattle. Therefore they said, If we have found grace in your sight, let this land be given to your servants as a possession. Do not make us cross over the Jordan. Then Moses said to the sons of Gad and to the sons of Reuben, Your brothers go to war, and shall you sit here? Now why do you pervert the minds of the children of Israel from crossing over into the land the Lord gives to them? Did not your fathers act in this way when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land? They went up to the valley of Eshkol and spied out the land, and they turned aside the heart of the children of Israel, so they would not enter the land the Lord gave them. So the Lord was very angry that day and swore an oath, saying, Surely these men who came up from Egypt from twenty years old and above and who now know good and evil, shall not see the land I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For they did not follow after me, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who separated himself, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they followed after the Lord. So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he made them wander in the desert forty years, until all the generation that did evil before the Lord was utterly destroyed. Behold, you rose up in your father's place, a body of sinful men, to increase still more the fierce anger of the Lord against Israel. For you will turn away from him by again leaving him in the desert, and you will act lawlessly against his entire congregation. They came to Moses and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our children. But we will arm ourselves as the advanced guard before the sons of Israel until we bring them to their own place, and our children will dwell in the fortified cities because of the Lord's inhabitants. And our, and our children will dwell in the fortified cities because of the land's inhabitants. Let us not return to our homes until each of the sons of Israel should be distributed to his inheritance. Therefore, let us not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan, and beyond, because we are receiving in full our portions on this eastern side of the Jordan. Then Moses said to them, If you do according to this word, if you arm yourselves before the Lord for war, and all your armed men cross over the Jordan before the Lord until his enemy is destroyed before his face, and the land is subdued before the Lord, then afterward you shall return and be blameless before the Lord and before Israel and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you should not do so, you shall be guilty before the Lord, and you will know your sin when evils overtake you. So you shall build cities for yourself and for your children, and walled enclosures for your cattle, and do what proceeded out of your mouth. Then the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben spoke to Moses, saying, Your servants will do as our Lord commands. Our children, our wives, and all our cattle will be there in the cities of Gilead, but your servants will cross over, all armed and arrayed for battle, before the Lord into the war, in the manner our Lord says. So Moses appointed for them Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the rulers of families in the tribes of Israel. Again Moses said to them, If the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben cross over the Jordan with you, every man armed for war before the Lord, and you subdue the land before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead as a possession. But if they do not cross over with you armed for war, you shall carry across their children, their wives, and their cattle before you into the land of Canaan. Then the sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben answered, saying, Whatever our Lord says to your servants, so we will do. We will cross over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, but you shall give us our possession on the other side of the Jordan. 
So Moses gave to the sons of Gad, the sons of Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land and its cities with its borders, the cities surrounding the country. Then the sons of Gad built Dibon, Ataroth, Aroer, Shofan, and Jazer, which they raised up along with Beth Nimrah and Beth Haran, fortified cities and walled enclosures for sheep. The sons of Reuben built Heshbon, Eliala, Kirjathaim, and Balmeon, encircled with walls, and Shibma, and they named the cities they built after their names. Then the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it, and destroyed the Amorites dwelling in it. So Moses gave Gilead to Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt there. Also Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took their farming villages and named them Havoth, Jair. Then Nobah went and took Kenoth and its villages, and he named them Nobah after his own name. Here ends the reading for today.